from the first time I came out, and you all getting tired. And, uh, but anyway, he got to that place. Folks, don't ever get to a place where you look around and say, why did they fail? And forget to realize that you can fail too. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Pretty sure you're talking about somebody been pastoring this church 41 years. You stand up there telling me uh, that you had that kind of trial of life. Brother, I'm telling you, the devil's on your trail. He's going to hammer you. He's going to hound you in one way or the other. He's going to try to get you to say the wrong thing at the wrong time. He's going to do something to try to mess you up. If he don't, he's already got you. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I heard one or two. Don't ever come to that point in life where you think I'm the only Christian God's God. I go to the only church there is. I got more than everybody else. Honey, you've got exactly what God gave you. And if God gave it to you, be proud of it and thank God for it. And keep working to get home. But don't ever think you've got more than anybody. I've seen Christians, I thought they had way more than I had. Well, if I could just do that. But I've seen these Christians fall. I've seen them have to repent. I've seen that come out, and that's what happened to David. Now, I never had this problem, but David walked out, and Bathsheba was over there. He had come to the point where I am king, I've got power, I'll do what I want. When David looked across there and saw Bathsheba, he should have turned around, went back in the house, and closed the door. But he didn't. And he failed. And one day he came down to the lowest point anybody could get. He lay on the floor, crying into the floor. Plus a rock, whatever kind of floor it was. Weeping, praying, agonizing with God because that little baby was dying. When they came in, David would not eat, he would not shave, he would not change clothes. David, you might say, on Skid Row, in a kingdom's palace, but he was on Skid Row. You know there's people tonight living in great mansions, but they're on Skid Row. They're not happy, they're destitute, they're taking their own lives, they're doing things. That big man they got in New York the other day, whether he's guilty or not, I don't know. But I just know there's people like that. Brother, we never come to the place where we're bigger than God. We never come to the place well, we can break God's laws and not pay for it. Never come to the place to think you're so full of power that you can just go mess with anything and get away with it and it won't bother you. That's why I warn people tonight, what bothers you, stay away from it. Don't be foolish. Don't go around the things that tempt you and have a problem with. Stay away from it. Stay away from it. But David in closing, David was in, in, in the pits. He was wild and screaming and begging to God. And they came in. And the men were afraid to tell David. They didn't know what he would do. But you've got your child to die. And David heard him talking. He overheard him and see him. And he said, the baby's dead. In other words, when the Bible said, just the one we talked today. He said, the baby's dead, isn't it? And they told him, yes. They gave him the news. They were fearful that David might get up and wipe them out. But David had been through a valley and so humble and so preserved under the presence of God that he was willing to do anything to get back to God. And he went and prayed to the Lord, return unto me the joy of thy salvation. I've lost the joy of man. I've lost my joy. Lord, turn me, only joy I can have now is going to come from you. Only pleasure I'm going to have is going to come from you. Return unto me the joy of thy salvation. He rose up, he shaved, cleaned himself up, and he ate. You know why? Because David, David had been reserved, and he said, at the feet of God, at the throne of God, because God didn't give up on him. Folks, don't give up on people. 
I know some guys that get bothered sometimes. Well, the same old thing, but don't give up on them. Because if they'll just come to the Lord. Then there's that person you might have prayed for for years. As a matter of fact, I don't know how old Rob is. A lot of those years we prayed for Robbie. <laughs> I don't know how old he is. He's probably 35, 40. <laughs> I am now. Praise God. <clears throat> Sometimes you'd wonder, you know, when you used to come to singings and stuff. And he started coming back. And I knew there was something taking place. Because you're not talking about it. Then thank God this morning. Woo! All that's in the past now. He's become a new creature in Christ Jesus. God preserved him. God preserved him until May the 22nd. About 11.30 in the morning. God preserved him for this moment in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He probably didn't know that to now. But I'm talking about sometimes we get very low. Thank God we never get stoned, but the blood of Jesus Christ will go me. Get a stone tonight. Praise the Lord. We love you. God loves you. I know the house is not full, but if I ever come to the place, say, well, I'll just preach to you on Sunday morning tonight. I'll get somebody else to preach Sunday night. That's about the time I've lost my experience with God. That's the time it's all about me and not about God. That's the time it's all about me and not the people that I'm preaching to. That is what happened. Some of the greatest messages. You know, I went to pastor in church one time. I ain't went to pastor. And I would come here that year in Hickory Grove over here. And uh, I went to Papa Plains and I told him I'd help him out. They just have a church every other Sunday. And I went over there and the first Sunday I went. They couldn't get a pastor. That's usually how I get a church to pastor. They can't get anybody. And that's how I've kept one all these years. <laughs> and uh, that morning is a few people there, maybe 25, I don't know, whatever. But when the Sunday school bell rang and it was over, I had six people left in the audience to preach to. And Evelyn Evans, she was here in the uh, singing. <coughs> She's 90, some years old. No relation. She married an image, but no relation. Uh, she got up to introduce me, and she felt so bad. I know she was embarrassed, and she started apologizing. I got up and I said, Sister, don't worry about that. I think I said, uh, if I remember, maybe not exactly right. I said, some of the greatest messages Jesus ever preached, he preached to one and two and three people. And I said, the greatest one he ever preached is when he looked at Nicodemus and said, you must be born again. Hallelujah. This gospel is good for everybody. When I left there, the year was up, and that's when I came to Hickory Road at the end of that year. When I left there, there was 35, 40, many people staying in the church. See, if I walked out that day and said, honey, let's don't go back home, I'm not going to that place. I remember Lisa said, people were so good, Tammy was sick, and uh, she had hepatitis, and she couldn't get out. And there was an older, elder lady in the church, she would make her a toy and send it to her every Sunday. See, that was a year's experience in my life. It didn't look like it's going to be anything. But thank God, I wouldn't take nothing in the world for it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless y'all. Stand and say good night. I feel like.